Hey Faith Folk, welcome and welcome back. So for today's video, we're gonna be doing a cheeky little unboxing of the 10,000 Escape Plans Blind Box BJD dolls from Kika Goods. So I need to start off the video by saying a huge shout out to Kika Goods for sending me this big old box of dolls for free. There are six dolls in here, so we're gonna be taking a look at all of those different dolls today. Um, so yeah, big huge thank you to them for sending this to me. As per usual though, whenever I do get stuff from Kika Goods, they are nice enough to send it to me, but I'm not required to say anything. So anything that I say that is nice about these dolls is completely honest and if there's something to critique I'm gonna critique it like I'm always gonna be 100% upfront with you guys so no worries on that account but yeah they sent me to these because they are having a big like Halloween event right now with tons of different sales going on. I will have on screen flashing different like details of the different sales that are going on because there are so many. They've got a few sales where if you spend X amount of dollars on their website, you can get a certain amount of dollars off of your entire purchase or they've got some buy one, get one free, some buy one, get one half off. Just a lot of different sales going on. Not every item is like applicable with every single sale. So definitely check and see if there's anything you've been kind of eyeing on Kika Goods, which ones are part of which sale but the good news is there's so many different things going on like chances are if you've been looking at something it's probably included in some sort of sale all of these sales do end on november 3rd the exact like time frame where it ends will be on the little images that i'm showing you on screen here so definitely like if you're seeing this before november 3rd check out kika goods see if there's anything there that you're wanting to take advantage of the sale with and if you happen to be seeing this after november 3rd i can still tell you you're always free to use code fairytale 10 to get 10 percent off your order maybe not quite as exciting as their halloween event but like it's still something. Every little bit off your order definitely counts. With that, it's not an affiliate code or anything. I don't earn commission. It's just kind of a thank you for watching my videos revolving around the Kika Goods products. So again, if you're seeing this after November 3rd, you can absolutely feel free to use that discount code. But yeah, we're looking at this big old box of dolls today. I'm super, super hyped for these. I am like really, really particular when it comes to blind boxes. I say this all the time in that even when I'm getting them like in a set like this, I typically don't like to unless I genuinely like something about all of the options just because I don't want to feel disappointed when I'm opening a box of dolls, you know. So here you can hopefully see all of the different styles that are available on the front of the box here. And I'm really excited for all of them. It's, I think the hidden one is probably my favorite, which is so sad because like the chances of me getting it are super, super low. But outside of that... I think I like this black and gray one. I feel like she's kind of simple compared to some of the other designs, but she's just really cute and very appealing. Also, I need to highlight the absolutely adorable art on top of this box. Like, that's so pretty. My husband has actually already claimed it. He said I need to deconstruct the box and he wants to keep the top as a little decoration for his game room. So shout out to the top of the box there. But yeah, I think that's everything we need to get through with the intro. Obviously, the important part is going to be actually getting into these dolls and unboxing them for you guys. So let me get my setup all situated and everything and I will be right back with you to take a closer look at these dolls. Alrighty, so I've got all of the little boxes out of that bid box. So this is one individual blind box BJD in here. I'm gonna go ahead and do like the full unboxing for the first one on camera. And then the others I'll just like unbox super quick off camera and then take a look at the dolls themselves. But this way you can get kind of a feel for what it's like to take this out of the box without me just repeating that process because it's probably gonna take me a long time because I'm kind of bad at this. <laughs> so hopefully it'll be kind of like the best of both worlds. So on the front here, you can see the same art that was on the top of the box that is super, super cute. I might save one of these for myself too, not gonna lie. I just, I don't know what it is. There's something really charming about this like kind of anime style art with the pixels. It's really, really cute to me. And then on the side here, you can see all of the different characters. We're just gonna like ignore the hidden one because Again, I probably will not be getting that one. So these are the dolls that we are likely going to be taking a look at today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just dig on in. This box did come like slightly open when I pulled it out of the big box, but do a little rip there. Okay, so gray hair. So we have the one that I think is my favorite up first. What a fun little coincidence. Oh gosh. Oh wow, okay. So I, I never know because I feel like every time I get a blind box from Kika Goods, it's like a little bit different. Sometimes they have like all of their accessories off to the side. Sometimes they don't. But this is how this one comes packaged. So you can see that I have to dress her entirely, which is totally chill. Let's go ahead and... Oh, wow. Okay. I was expecting tape for some reason. Like I thought I was going to pull and then immediately meet resistance. 
but no, which is totally fine. <laughs> so, oh, wow. There's so many interesting things going on here. Let me get the uh, plastic out from under her hair right quick. So as with a lot of dolls that you can get on Kika Goods, they do have like a faceplate that looks like this when it's, you know, not held in place by the hair. And then there are two sections of hair that click together or like squeeze together to kind of secure the doll. This one, there is a decent gap. To be fair, my hands are slightly weaker than perhaps the average person's. <laughs> so this might be a me issue. We'll find out as we go along with the other dolls if they have a similar gap that I can't close that might be a strength thing, or it might just be that this one in particular is a little bit harder to close, or there might be like a headband that's supposed to go there. We'll find out. <laughs> but in any case, this is what she looks like. I'm actually going to take off the front piece of hair so you can more clearly see her face because the eyes are really, really cool. In this one, there's a little skull, which is just like such a fun, tiny little detail there. It is painted on eyes. There's not like inset eyes for this right now, <laughs> but very cute design wise. I love her little like slightly confused expression. It's very charming. So I'm going to pop the hair back in here so we can take a look more at the hairstyle. I think this is a really cute hairstyle. It is a bit heavy. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but her head does tilt ever so slightly back. Thankfully, it's not like a huge problem. It's not like she's, you know, bending all the way backwards. It's just a tiny bit, but I did feel like I needed to mention that to you guys. Very slight gray gradient here. I just love the little like bun thing she's got on the side. I think that's a really, really cute design. And then this is the body that we've got going on. So we have a lot of articulation in the shoulder as well as the elbow. We have articulation at the wrist, although the hands were put on backwards, <laughs> were they? Oh no, she's got, she's got two left hands. Look, that's kind of funny. Good thing is she does come with extra hands. So like, I'm not too bothered by it, but also I guess be aware of that. I'm gonna see if the same hand, like if I have two right hands in there at all, Anyway, though, she also has some chest articulation here. And then we've got swivel and bend for the hips. We've got articulation in the knees and then articulation at the foot. That was so wild to realize that she's got two left hands. Just not quite what I was expecting. So going further into everything that comes in here, I guess let's go ahead and answer the question of the hands real quick. I don't even have to pull this open. These are just like a bunch of different poses. And I can tell you right off the bat, because all of these hands are in poses, she does not come with like just a relaxed right hand. So this does seem like a bit of a manufacturing error. So again, it's, it's not, I'm trying to like really be objective because these dolls do cost, I want to say $23 per doll and they are blind boxes. So that is, you know, a decent investment that you're making, obviously for a doll with like this much articulation. And it seems like there might be a decent amount of detail in the clothing. I don't think it's a horrible price, but I do think that having the uh, two left hands is notable with that. Again, thankfully, it's not the end of the world because she does come with all of these extra hands. So I can just switch one out, but I still feel very obligated to point that out as a negative thing for you guys, because you might not feel confident switching the hands. You might not like these hands. You might want your doll to just have a relaxed position. And these all do have poses. So like, that's kind of the first big hit. I mean, the hair was like potentially, but like, that's a pretty big hit, but we press on. <laughs> so let me take a look at her. Hello. There we go. I couldn't get it out. Her little art card here. I do like having these. I just find it kind of cute to get to have little cards for the different BJDs that I have received. And then on the back is a little bit of information. Super, super cute. Put that off to the side here. So then we get into some of the clothing. I guess this is more of an accessory, but I don't know. That's kind of clothing, right? <laughs> so she comes with these headphones that have these ears on top. They're pretty simple but they're effective. Let's go ahead and slide them on. Cause I want to see how it fits with like the gap in her head. Mm. So they do kind of stay on. Like I'm having a little bit of trouble getting them to stay. Cause like they, they can get knocked out of place quite easily. It's a tad bit finicky, I guess. They also don't like quite reach down 
to the right spot. Like you can see her entire ear over here is visible despite the headband. You can use it to kind of block off that seam with the hair, but like, I don't know, it's not perfect. To me, I feel like, I don't know, I don't immediately notice it if I'm looking at the doll from up front, but also, you know, this is a doll that's meant to be super poseable. You're not always supposed to be looking at her from the front. So the fact that her entire ear is not covered, maybe less than stellar. So I don't know. I don't know about those. I'm probably going to go ahead and just take those off of her for now. Then this is very interesting to me. So we also get two things that go together and I don't think. Okay, so no. So we do get a second faceplate that you could swap out to go underneath like the hair and everything. This one does have like a blank face. So there's no mouth or anything printed on there and also open eyes. And then you do also get some of this putty. So if you have eyes or if you create BJD eyes or if you know someone who does and like they'll make some for you, then you can actually like swap out the faceplate. You can use the putty here to insert your own eyes into this. You could paint a face on it. You could pop it on there. I do really like that this doll comes with an extra faceplate just because I think it's really cool that you can get the design that like it comes with. But then if you don't like the face, you have some of the supplies necessary to kind of create your own. It's just, it's something that I completely did not expect while unboxing this doll. And I honestly think it's really cool. I think that that's just like a a fun little inclusion to have because it's 100% not necessary. Like this is a complete doll by itself, but it's a fun addition. And it's something that I really do appreciate having. I just, I think that's kind of nifty. So we'll put that there. I'm trying to like move some of my trash out of the way. Hold on. Was there, there was something else. There's just a little cross. that was in the bag that the headphones were in. Did that come off somewhere? Huh. So I, I, it doesn't look to me like it popped off anywhere. I just don't know where it's supposed to be. Let me see. Oh, okay. I see. So if you look at the art on the box, she's got a little cross in her hair. And then if you look at the doll, that cross is not there. So I guess if you wanted to, you could either use glue or maybe even like a very, very small pinch of this putty to go ahead and affix the cross to her hair because it's supposed to be almost like a barrette. And it is ever so faintly curved. You're definitely not going to be able to see that on camera. But it does have a faint curve to it so that it would like sit across here. It's really hard because it's so tiny to like kind of show you. But that's kind of the vibe that we're supposed to be going for with that. So, okay, that's kind of interesting that it wasn't just like automatically on there. I guess it's nice if you don't like it that you don't have to have it on there. But, you know, I'm glad that it was included. Again, it's just kind of an option. We've got super basic shoes. They're just white. No painted detail or anything, which is honestly a bit surprising. I don't know. I feel like there's a decent amount of detail in other aspects of this doll. But... Could be worse. It's not offensive to me. It's just something to note. And then we have the packet with all of her clothing. So let me get that opened up. So yeah, the, the clothing I do think is really quite solid. I'm trying to get all the plastic out of the way so it doesn't like bother y'all. So we have this like super, super cropped sweater that, I mean, it doesn't cover anything on the chest. At least I'm assuming it won't according to the art on the box. <laughs> I actually really like this style of clothing. I know it's somewhat impractical because it's like a very incomplete sweater. But something about it is just really cute to me. It is properly knit and it is so, so soft. Like this is a very satisfying garment. It just feels super, super nice. The little turtleneck on there and like the slight cuffs on the sleeves. I'm not really seeing like loose threads, which is good to see. I am going to put this on her. I'm not just going to like hold it up and hold y'all in suspense. So you'll get to see what this looks like on the doll. But just feeling it off the doll, it does feel really nice, very high quality, which I love to see. The shirt itself does feel like very much less so. I'm having trouble even making it like noticeably a shirt on camera with it not being on the doll. Um, none of the edges are hemmed. It's just kind of this stretchy fabric. It is slightly sheer. Uh, honestly, it, it kind of reminds me of a fabric that you would see on like seamless panties, like that you're supposed to wear under leggings that are like less noticeable. So you don't have a panty line or whatever. 
it's it's kind of reminding me of that fabric. I don't necessarily hate it just because like if it doesn't fray, which in my experience, I feel like this fabric isn't the most prone to fraying, then it should be fine. But also it definitely feels like a noticeably lower quality than this piece here. So we'll see how it looks on, but just in terms of like the quality of the pieces you're getting, maybe not the most. Then we do have this really cute necklace that I immediately dropped like all the way across the floor. Wow. <laughs> but it is a proper necklace with like a stretchy elastic cord and then the dangling cross on there which is super cool like at this scale i feel like getting a real necklace is super super nice to see i will have to take off her hair and her faceplate to get it like onto her neck but that's totally fine i just i do appreciate that i feel like that's a really solid little detailed piece and then lastly we have her pants which also seem like they've got a nice amount of detail to them they are kind of like a faux denim material I like the colors on here, like the black and the white stitching gives it this kind of almost like textured vibe. <laughs> I don't know. I just think it's really cute. We've got a couple of places here that are like slightly ripped, slightly distressed, and then a little decal patch towards the bottom of this leg. It is just like a decal. It's not an actual patch or anything like that, but it is quite cute. We have a proper belt that is attached to the pants. It's like all sewn together, so you can't take the belt off unless you like seam rip it out you can't really just like easily take it off love the chain i love the fact that it's a proper chain like that's just again something that you don't always see on dolls of this scale and for this price so i really love to see that because it just has so much more movement and so much more detail than not a real <laughs> chain so let me go ahead real quick off camera i'm gonna dress her right quick and then we'll see how she looks with everything on Alrighty, so as you can see, she's actually, in fact, not wearing her entire outfit. I had so much trouble trying to get this adorable little sweater on, specifically because of the hands, because, like, it is fairly stretchy, but where the armhole is sewn, it, it can only stretch so much, right? Like, it's much wider at the wrist area than it is kind of at the shoulder area, and because of the way the hands are, the thumb pokes out far enough to where it kept poking straight through the fabric of the knit, and I was really worried. I mean, you can even see here. Maybe you'll be able to see on camera. Like, how that little piece is sticking out a smidgen. That's because I was trying to force it over the hands, which is hugely disappointing because I think it's so cute. But I had to stop because I just felt like I was going to end up damaging the doll if, or like damaging the sweater more if I kept trying to put it on. There are hands, these I think are like the best bet because it's a little bit more compact, like the thumb isn't sticking out so much like it is on the others. I can't switch it now though, because when you switch BJD hands, um, you can kind of, I'll try to like demonstrate here, pull it up and you see this little hook that is hooked into the hand that is attached to the elastic, that's what's keeping it all together. So when you change them, what you'll typically do is insert something into this little thread of elastic here that's like long so that it will block this thread from going into the arm when you take the hand off. And like, cause right now the hand is what's keeping like the elastic stretched out because it's too big to go into the wrist joint. Whereas if you take that off, suddenly the whole thing could just go in there and then you have to restring the entire doll and it's like a huge pain in the ass. So <laughs> I typically what you'll do is like I, I use um, like safety pins or paper clips or like if you have a toothpick, you can do that. Actually, do I have toothpicks? Because I was like all of my safety pins and stuff that I normally would use for this sort of thing are downstairs in the doll room <laughs> and I don't want to go down there right now. So I couldn't do that. I might have a toothpick though. So let me go see if I do, because I might actually be able to change the hands out. And then I can see if I can get the sweater on. Give me one second. All right. All I can say is, wow, I am so lucky I had a toothpick. So <laughs> I was able to change out both of her hands. So now she doesn't have two left. She has a left and a right to this much like more compact pose. Even so, I was barely able to get this sweater on. So the bright side, I guess, is that I was able to get it on and it looks really, really cute. However, I do think that it is inherently a flaw that even the like most compact of hands almost can't fit through it. And then also the fact that if you want to put on the sweater, you have to change the hands. And then if you don't like this shape of hand, you then have to change them a second time. It doesn't take that long. I was probably off camera for like five minutes total, but it is just kind of an annoyance. And so I do feel like it's worth pointing out. 
Quick editing note here, not to spoil anything, but throughout the rest of the video, I will be mentioning having to remove and change the hands and like the difficulty with the clothing. And I did feel like this was probably just like the best point to insert this. Post filming, I realized that the handbags also came with like what I can only describe as like a peg hand, which I feel like sounds kind of weird, <laughs> but it's just a peg that has like the ball at the wrist that attaches to the elastic. So I think that is what you are meant to use to change the clothing. So I did want to put that in there and make a note that like they do have something that you can use that should be super, super easy to get through the sleeves and everything because it's like the size of the wrist or smaller, right? Like it's, it's, much more compact even than that most compact hand position. So they do have something you can use that is easier. However, I do still think that at least some of my critique is valid because while anytime I complain about like the hand size specifically is technically going to be wrong from here on out <laughs> because there was a thinner one that I could have used that I just like didn't realize what it was for until it was too late. I do still think that it is a little bit irritating, I guess, that you have to change the hands into the peg hand before you can put the clothing on. So I just wanted to make that distinction really quick here that technically speaking, I was not fully correct when I'm talking about this and I won't be for the rest of the video, but I do still think that a lot of what I have to say still applies in terms of just the fact that you have to still do some sort of changing. It's just you're changing to something different. So hope that makes sense, but I just wanted to pop that in here. That being said, now that I have her all put together, I do think this is really cute. I am now very grateful actually for the material that this like little under tank top is made of because it was so stretchy that it was super easy to get over the arms and everything. So like it's it the most expensive? Maybe not. I mean, not even maybe not. It's definitely not the most expensive, but it actually serves its function very, very well. I did put the necklace on underneath the turtleneck just because I kind of think it looks cute popping out like that, but also it helps it to stay in place. You know, like it's not jostling around so much because the turtleneck's on top. And I mean, this is so cute, right? Like looking at the top half, absolutely adorable. I love the outfit. And then the pants, I think also look really super. There are these little cutouts at the hip that I think are just so, so fun. I just love how they look. And they're also a lot more obvious on the doll than I thought they would be. Like when I was just looking at it off camera, I was like, oh, those are kind of barely there, but they're a lot more obvious on the doll. And I really love that vibe. I just think it's a super cute design choice. The baggy pants look great. The shoes, I mean, not being painted with these pants, I feel like you don't really notice because you're not seeing like the molded details. You're just kind of like, oh yeah, the shoes are popping out there. So wow, what a hassle. Um, I mean, obviously, like I said, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I've been very upfront about the struggles that I had. And so I think it's hard for me to say that this one in particular is like 100% worth it because that was a lot of strife that I went through. And especially if you're someone who maybe this is your first time buying a BJD, changing the hands might be intimidating. Like that might be something that's a little bit scary for you. And I completely understand that. It scared the shit out of me the first time I had to do it. But it is doable. So like pros and cons here. But that is the first doll. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and unbox the others off camera and get them like all settled in their outfits. And then we will discuss all of their details all at once kind of in a row here. So let's get to doing that one. Let's clear out some of the extra accessories here. She can stay. She can be part of the crew. But the accessories are going to have to get out the way. <laughs> Oh, okay. So it has actually been a couple of hours since I exited to unbox the rest of these dolls. What an experience. I have so much to tell you. Part of that was just because after I finished like dealing with them, I did need to like do other things in, you know, my real life. <laughs> but uh, it, it took me probably a solid hour just to get everything situated, if not more. So let's start talking about it. I'm going to go from here over to here, I have to do the, this to know my lefts and rights. So I'm going to go right to left over here just because I think that's going to be the easiest way to do this. Like I think the order of operations is going to be best that way. So let's just go ahead and jump on into it. So a couple of accessories that this red doll does not have on are another one of those like faux barrette pieces that you could stick on her hair here. And then also this little like bunny ears headband that is supposed to go here. However, it just falls right off and you can't do it the other way. Oh God, you can't do it the other way because her ponytail gets in the way. 
Like it, it just doesn't go on. I did think, which by the way, the seams on most of the dolls are not as thick as the first one. So like it wasn't my hands. That's, that's an actual thing. I did think that I might be able to stick this like into the seam and then clip the hair in, but nice. Just now you can actually see, I can't get it shut. So if I let go, it all just kind of falls apart. I mean, yeah, it's it's not really viable. I was like, maybe you could get it to stay for one photo, but it's just really not a viable option. Um, anyway, though, looking at this doll in particular, kind of hard to see because of her hair plate, but she does have a X in this eye and it's like half red and this eye is gray. I do like the face. I think the hair is quite cute. Um, God, I don't even know where to start. There's so many things I need to get through. I guess the first thing we're gonna say is that all of these black pieces can and will stain. And to be fair, that is first of all, not exclusive to this doll line. That's kind of just a thing that is present in a lot of doll lines, even like Barbie and stuff like that have had staining issues in the past. So it's not exclusive. And also Kika Goods does have on their website listing for these dolls, a disclaimer saying that the black can stain. So I, I, it's not necessarily even something I'm trying to critique. I did just want to be sure to say that because it is definitely a thing. The next doll we are going to take a look at with the black shoes, her shoes scuff like instantly, like the doll's skin is immediately covered with like black streaks. So if that is something that you're worried about, if you want to be able to change the outfits on these dolls, then definitely just kind of be aware because I mean, most of them do have some sort of black incorporated into their outfit. If you're just going to keep them displayed like this, it doesn't really matter because any of the stained parts are going to be covered up. But I just wanted to give a verbal warning in addition to Kika Goods having their written warning on their website. Now, this is all of the other dolls did have, you know, normal sets of hands aside from the first one. And this one, this one does have, you can see her thumb is pointed towards her body. I did have to switch out these hands as well to get them through the jacket. And then this one, the thumb, instead of pointing to her body, is pointing away from her body. So she does have two, what is that, left hands? Did I say left hands before and was I wrong? I don't know. Point being is she doesn't have a right and the left. <laughs> so that is an issue. I went ahead and kept it because I figured I would go ahead and demonstrate how I changed the hands for you guys, just in case you were like confused by what I was saying earlier. So I'm going to try really hard to get everything like properly on camera. But uh, yeah, I just, I wanted to give a demonstration since I quite literally have to for this one. Kind of hard to do with just two hands when I'm trying to like film it, but if you stretch it up, you see this elastic piece here. You wanna thread the toothpick in to that elastic piece. The hand fell off, that's okay though. It's secure now. This is significantly easier. Like if you see me struggling at all, just know this is significantly easier when you're not trying to hold the doll aloft. Her hair fell off. When <laughs> I, You know what, I need to take her head off to it show y'all something else anyway so we're just gonna do that for a second anyway though when you like can rest the doll and you're not trying to like hold it up in the air so that you can see it it's significantly easier to do this so if i look like i'm struggling i promise you while it is something that takes some finesse it is easier than i'm making it look so now we just have the hook and this is secure so that the hook won't fall into the wrist and then if we take the one that i want let me make sure that i have the right hand yes so we're just putting on the flat hand that she had before because like again I had to take it off to get the jacket on but now I can put it back on so you'll see in here there's like a little notch and then there's like a bar going through so you're just gonna slide this end of the hook into that so that it hooks on so the hand is like attached and then you can simply very gently remove the toothpick and now there's a new hand on there so it's not terrible um, but I will say I find it extremely frustrating that I had to do it again. And actually I had to do it. Okay. So these three, I did not have to switch the hands for like these three, but this one, the first one, and this one, I did have to switch the hands for to get their outfits on. So it's not the worst thing ever. Um, I'm not really necessarily someone who I would say is like a connoisseur of BJDs. I don't have the most experience ever with them. So that might not be a super unusual situation, but I did just want to highlight it because I do feel like these sorts of blind box BJDs are a more accessible form of BJDs for people. And so it might be an entry point for a lot of people. And so when it's slightly difficult or it's something that maybe you haven't encountered before, I do just feel like it's only fair 
to talk to y'all about it and kind of give you a warning. So the reason, um, just jumping right into the next thing. Sorry, I have so much to say that I'm like, I gotta kind of be quick about this. The reason I have the head off and like I let that stay off after the hair fell is because she does have a choker. So if you'll see, choker, you just go all the way around, but it does not Velcro. That's not Velcro. That's just like the end of where they cut the faux leather and it's sewn together. So in order to get the choker on, which let me just say <laughs> four out of the six have a choker that you need to get on. You can't just remove the faceplate. I don't really like, it doesn't bother me that they have the faceplates that come off because this is like a very easy fix. Like putting this together is not super, super difficult, even for a beginner. And there is that security in this little portion here where it's not gonna fall right off, right? Like it's not like the hand where if you remove the hand, you're suddenly at risk of like unstringing everything. As long as you are only removing the faceplate and the hair, this isn't gonna come off because it's latched in here. But to get the choker on, you have to remove this piece as well, which means that you have to do the toothpick trick on the neck. It is a little bit harder, at least on these dolls on the neck. Again, I don't know if that's universally true, but for these, it is certainly true that it is harder on the neck because it is two strands of elastic. It just has more tension. It was thicker. It was significantly more difficult to do. Obviously I did it successfully for all the ones that I had to, but I, I just feel like that is super important for me to note that if you want the chokers to go on these dolls, you do have to do something that I personally would consider to be a bit more difficult and a bit more of like an advanced move when it comes to BJDs. So just please do be aware of that. Obviously you could just not put the choker on. That's totally an option, but if you want it, it is going to cause you a little bit of, um, I don't want to say strife because like I might just have a harder time. <laughs> it's going to take a little bit more effort. And for me, it definitely caused some strife. But let me put her head and everything back on. I just realized I didn't even show y'all her little card. This is the card. <laughs> so again, very cute. She has her jacket more like slouchy in the card, but I have it on fully. I do really like the jacket. It feels very nice quality, like faux leather here. So that's a plus. I also really like the top with this embroidered butterfly top. Y'all know I'm a sucker for butterflies in general, but like butterfly tops also just have a very like special place in my heart. I just think that they look so, so stinking cute. The back or like the underneath the butterfly is this stretchy, almost velvety material. So I was able to get this on over like her head base, I guess is a good way to put it pretty easily. It's not like the choker. You don't have to remove everything to get this on so that was nice i was a little bit worried about that but it's all chill and then her skirt here does have a couple of different layers of fabric i really do like the colors and like the little hint of plaid here i think is a nice touch we've got a couple of chains so there's a couple real black chains as well as a little pearl chain on the side which i think is really really cute i just love all like the dangliness of it and the texture of it i think is nice however the skirt does not have a gusset so it does have a tendency to ride up a little bit which is a tad frustrating if you're just like having them just on display it's not a big issue but if you're someone who does like to move the dolls around or photograph dolls a lot I feel like that would get irritating having to fix it constantly so again just something to note and then we've got some asymmetrical socks here so there is like a sheer sock on this leg and then the leg warmer is a separate piece that goes over it and then obviously this leg warmer and we have the same shoes although there is some red painted detail on the buckles and they're gray this time all of the dolls do have the same shoes but they just have different coloring so that is our red gal here they do have names but i didn't like look them up i can't see them on here because they're not in a language that i can understand and uh, yeah, I, I didn't really think to look them up. So that's my bad, fam. <laughs> but anyway, on to the next doll. So this one does have a like head hair accessory that is these sunglasses that you're supposed to just set on here, I guess, at least according to the card. That's what's supposed to be going on. I think this is a bit of a weird choice and I honestly kind of would have preferred if like, sorry, I'm moving stuff around if there just wasn't the sunglasses because to me it's like there's not really a good place to put them because they don't aren't bent right i mean i guess you can bend them i just got it bent i don't know i just think this is like a little bit more weird than the brett's but that could just be a personal thing i do think this doll's face is super cute the one 
eye having the star in it is really eye-catching and really precious. I think the contrast there is nice. I also just like her like slightly sleepy looking face. The hair is really fun with this little gradient with kind of the blue tips there. And I think the style is really precious. This jacket is hands down the most impressive item of clothing that came with any of these dolls. This is genuinely so cool to me. First of all, despite how you would think based on like the scrunching at the wrists, I was able to get the normal hands through. So that was super nice that it took like a little effort, but it wasn't crazy, right? <laughs> Again, high quality with the faux pleather, but this zipper, watch. You see it zipped up. It fully unzips. This is a fully functional zipper on this jacket. And I just like, oh my God, that's so incredible. That's so awesome to see. So that was super, super exciting. Unfortunately, the other pieces of the doll are a little bit less so. We have a choker again, so I had to get that on. But also the uh, top here is a halter top. So it's like this faux fur with a little um, like leopard print on there. But it has a chain that goes around the neck and it, the chain is so tight that you can't pull it over that head base that I was talking about earlier. So again, you have to have something that not only for the choker, but for the shirt itself, you're taking off literally the entire head. I think that's a little bit more egregious than the choker because like at least the choker is a relatively small accessory. And if you don't feel comfortable taking the whole head off, you just don't have to, and it doesn't impact the doll that much. Whereas if you, don't put the shirt on. Your doll just doesn't have a shirt. You have to find a completely different one for her. So that is a little distressing to me just because I feel like, I don't know, it just is something that takes a little bit more skill and finesse and might be intimidating to people who are new to the, having this kind of doll. And so having the shirt have the necessity of taking the whole head off feels like a lot. We do have little faux denim shorts here with a belt. It does have like a the actual belt but then like a extra loop that is sewn down on the hip so you can't move this it's just kind of there but they don't close like they almost do they're staying on just by the sheer width of her hips <laughs> but it, it doesn't close like all of this is velcro so there's that <laughs> we have a little like garter situation going on here with the blue and then the white heart buckle that is different than what is shown on the illustration here which is just a black like little buckle i'm assuming that that was just like a difference in design that happened to occur from the time when they made the art cards to the time that they produced the ball dolls that doesn't bother me so much as i just wanted to like let y'all know in case for some reason that garter was like the one thing you were super hyped about <laughs> Uh, then we've got these funky leg warmers that are fuzzy. They're very, very soft. They've got buckles on them and then just black shoes. This is the one that I was saying before because I, I accidentally put the left shoe on the right foot when I was getting her dressed. And when I took it off to fix it, her foot had black scuffs on it. So especially with the shoes, the black does stain. But again, that was something they warned us about. So kind of it is what it is. Moving on down. Next up, we have got this pink girl who is very, very cute. She does have designs in both of her eyes. So she's got heart in both eyes, which I think is quite precious. The hair, fairly simplistic, but nice. It is again, kind of weighed down just because of how long it is. The ones with short hair don't really have that problem. She's got a little bit of weight, but it's not too, too bad. We've got the choker again, this headband piece, the plastic ears are attached, although you can maybe see this one's kind of peeling up a bit which I can fix with glue, but like it is frustrating that I would have to. <laughs> I do think this is cute. It is just like a stretchy headband that goes around her head. So it's super, super easy to put on, which is nice. Um, I appreciate the ease of access there, especially because I, I assembled these in reverse order that I'm showing you. So we'll talk about these and you'll understand what's going on. By the time I got to this doll, I was so frustrated that it was really nice to have something that was just like easy to accomplish. I mean, these two also have stretchy headbands, but Listen, I, I had to take my wins where I could take them. This shirt is the same material that we saw on that first doll, only it has a decal on the front here. So that is cute. We've got some arm warmers with printed laces, but they have sewn ruffles. And that is on both sides, the same there. Her skirt is like the same pattern as this one in terms of like how the fabric is shaped, although it doesn't have an extra layer. And obviously like the 
decorations and the color scheme are a little bit different. So we've got the belt with a white chain this time, and then almost like a fanny pack attached to the belt that is in the shape of this coffin with a cross on it that I do think is a fun addition. Same problem with no gusset, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> we have the pink garter belt some mismatched shocks mismatched shocks i don't know why like i started to just like talk like that anyway <laughs> some mismatched socks i will say i think that the printed lacing looks a little more cheapy it doesn't bother me as much on the arm warmers but i feel like on this it's kind of i don't know unnecessary and then mismatched shoes as well so they've got kind of reverse color schemes but again same mold oh i almost forgot Holy, one second. Sorry. Tony just came home and I wasn't expecting it. Okay. Sorry about that. Tony got home like an hour and a half earlier than I expected him to. And he low-key scared me really bad. Anyway, though, the pink girl does have two of these little like not barrettes. So one is a black heart and then we have a white cross. So those are there as well. Then with this purple girl, I think she's really pretty. She does have a spider web in one eye, which is super fun to me because I feel like the stars and the hearts, like they're really cute, don't get me wrong, but this is just a little bit more unexpected. So I think there's something about it that I kind of appreciate more. I love the black bob with the purple streaks in the front. No purple streaks in the back, but very cute. Her stretchy cat headband has the ears that are a little bit more secure than that last one, like they're not peeling up. However, I think what's happening is because this sits like right on the seam of the hair and then goes underneath and is kind of applying pressure here, sometimes the hair just pops off if you like adjust the headband. <laughs> so there's that. Be careful. Um, I do like the little white cross. That one's attached to the headband itself, so you don't have to like glue that one on. Then her shirt here, almost like an abstract bat sort of pattern. I don't really know 100%, but it's cute. We've got a cold shoulder with some buckles on like the shoulder straps and then these little bat wings that she's got going on which i think are kind of funny but i do really like them i did not have to change the hands to get this shirt on which i super appreciated the skirt has some issues though so um looks wise very cute i like the purple chain i like the like heart buckle that it's got going on there the pattern and everything but hear this you hear how papery that was this skirt by far is like the worst fabric used in any of the dolls that I got in this set, which really just sucks because it's cute. And there is another problem. So to compare this skirt over here, you'll see it has the Velcro going all the way up. It's like the whole back of the skirt Velcros. This one, not the case. We've got just a teensy bit of Velcro at the top, which means, first of all, see what I'm saying? The headband went in and her hair popped off. Oh my goodness, I'm just, I'm struggling a lot this video, y'all. I ain't gonna lie. A second time? Okay, maybe you can hold together long enough. She's showing her whole butt. Like, her whole butt is visible, and like, you know, if you're doing that intentionally, I don't really care. That's your prerogative. But this is not intentional. This is not a design element. This is just not enough Velcro, which is really irritating. And then also, I think that it's making the issue of not having a gusset even worse, because this skirt is riding up even more than these two did. So it, it just kind of sucks because it looks really cute. But if you move her even slightly, the skirt is going way up here and it's just not, it's just not great. Then we have mismatched uh, leg warmers, this one with the faux stitching. And then this one has a cat and a purple cross, but the purple cross is already peeling up, came like that. So, yep. <laughs> and then we have purple on purple sneakers here. Then the last thing that that doll came with was her little unbranded Game Boy with some painted detail. So, you know, it's cool that we've got the buttons painted. And I do think this is a cute little accessory. It doesn't really solve to me the issues I have with the doll herself. But, you know, there's her card. <laughs> and then the last doll is this blue themed one. So looking at the eyes first, because we just kind of have been. I think the eyes are really cute. The cross in this one. Is super nice and I just I like the blue colors that they used on the couple of dolls that have blue eyes I just think that they look really really good then her hair is just kind of a blue color quite cute um her headband does interfere with the bows at her pigtails like it, it kind of has to go over it I tried to sit it underneath and the whole thing like popped up really awkwardly so that doesn't work the other thing with the headband is like she's supposed to have puppy ears like these cute little folded down puppy ears where you can see the spots 
clearly that's not happening. <laughs> there are spots on this side of the fabric and you could definitely like either glue it or like sew it down somehow so that the ears are properly folded so you can see that. But it doesn't come like that and it's just hugely disappointing to me because I feel like it looks stupid. Like it, it, it might just look like a different kind of dog or like a different animal if something were on this side of the ears. And like then I could kind of understand it because they're maybe giving you the option to have the ears in two different ways. But it's not. So you just have this like awkward shape and it, it's just really sad. <laughs> She also did have a choker that I had to remove the whole head to get on. And unfortunately in the process, half of the bone did come unglued. So, I mean, I can fix that. And in all fairness, that might have been more of user error because this was the first one that I did have to put the choker on because I, you know, assembled them this way and then I'm reviewing them this way. <laughs> so that could have been a user error on my part, but I do think that probably chokers that have big charms like this are going to be a little bit more difficult just because of like the leverage and everything you need. So that kind of sucks. I did have to switch the hands to get this dress on. And as you can see, this thread was actually a result of me having to force the hand through because even with the most tiny hand possible, I barely could get it on. And I actually can't get this one through. My hands are raw. I don't think you can really see. Nah, you can't see. But by the time I was done, my fingers and thumbs on both hands were physically in pain, like my pointer fingers. And also they were redder than the rest of my fingers and drier than the rest of my fingers. Like they, they were quite literally raw. Like they hurt to pinch right now. Again, that could be like partially me because I do have hands that have issues and like they're more sensitive. So like there is that, but I guess I bring it up because even though I know that could be a problem that is somewhat caused by me some of you guys also might have troubles with your hands and so i feel like you need to know ahead of time what you could be getting yourself into so yeah could not get this hand completely through um this fabric isn't terrible it's a little bit thin but otherwise feels all right and i do think the dress is really really cute it's interesting to me that she is the only one who comes with a dress but i love the style of it there's like a cross decal and a bow and everything that's all really cute the socks so we've got like a sheer white sock and then a more knitted white and blue striped sock. I will say on the description, like the product description on Kika Goods, they did warn specifically that this sock for some reason is prone to losing the color. So be aware of that if you happen to get this one. Like it's a warning that's on there, so I can't really fault them for it. I don't understand why this one in particular has trouble, but it is on there. There's my verbal warning. And then we just have plain white uh, leg warmers over both and then we have blue shoes and then lastly is her accessory which i think is my favorite accessory by far it's like a proper syringe like you can literally use it and it's got this adorable little angel wing heart and then cross design on there totally impractical absolutely adorable i think that is so fun like i'm gonna have to put some effort into this blue one but i am really really hyped for her so that's the details on all of them final thoughts I feel quite bad for what I need to say because this has been my most negative Kika Goods experience yet. Um, but like, obviously, again, I'm going to be honest with y'all and you've seen some of the struggles that I've gone through. So I'm not going to suddenly try to like hype it up as being super positive at the end here, right? So I guess my thoughts are that there are some quality control issues as well as just some quality issues period. I think these ears are absolutely egregious. This skirt being the fabric that it is and having the Velcro that it does without a gusset is also egregious. Some of the decals peeling up is absolute nonsense. Some things that I struggled with, like the fact that I had to remove the hands to dress some of the dolls or had to remove the heads to get the chokers on. Again, I'm not experienced enough in the BJD community in general to really feel confident saying that that is a specific problem with these dolls that's not found anywhere else. But I do feel comfortable saying that I think it's a problem that makes these dolls pretty intimidating for beginners. Because if I had never had a BJD before, if I hadn't already had to swap hands on some of the other ones that I have from Kika Goods, I would have been freaking out trying to accomplish this. I still was very nervous. So I, I do think that while it might not be unique, and might not even be considered a real problem. It is something that for beginners, I imagine would be extremely intimidating. And so I feel like it's of note. 
but there's no arguing against the quality, you know, there's no arguing against the fact that this skirt is really cheap and that these pants don't even close. And that's not even to mention the two dolls I got that had duplicate hands. Yes, they all did come with extra hands, which I don't know if I said that, but they all came with the same faceplate, putty, and hands. But like, all of these hands have poses, they're hearts, or they're pointing, or they're doing the peace sign, or they're giving you the middle finger, which like is fun, but it means that if you get a doll that has two of the same hands that are in like the base pose, you don't really have an option for having a doll that has normal hands unless you've like bought multiples and you're willing to steal from another. And I do just feel like that is an inherent issue. When I had the first one, I was willing to be like, okay, maybe I just got unlucky and like this is just an error and you know stuff happens like that right like sometimes you're gonna get dolls that have misprinted faces or apparently two left hands and like sometimes it does happen it really sucks but in any kind of mass manufacturing there there are gonna be accidents that happen but the fact that I got two of them that's too much for me I feel like out of six dolls your statistics should not be that two of them have a set of hands that are duplicate and honestly it could be even more than that because those are just the ones I noticed the at rest hands for this gray one and then the like slightly cupped hands for the red one both were like the same hand twice over instead of both a right and a left I haven't looked through all of these to see if I have two pointing hands that are both rights or two peace signs that are both left so it might even be worse but at bare minimum the statistic is two out of six dolls have duplicate hands. And I, I honestly can't say anything other than I think that's unacceptable. One is an error. One could be one in a thousand, right? Like that's something that I don't feel comfortable speaking on in a super, super, super negative way because I might've just gotten unlucky, but two out of six is too much statistically for me to feel comfortable just feeling like that's just an accident, right? Or feeling like that's just some awkward fluke. You could argue that because I got an entire box set, Maybe it is still just a fluke and I got a shitty box, but like, I don't know. I just don't feel comfortable with that. So I guess my overall thoughts are a little complicated because <laughs> the sad part is that I do think if you look at this purely from an aesthetic standpoint, these are some of my favorite dolls I have ever gotten from Kika Goods. And even my husband agrees, who doesn't really know much about dolls, who doesn't really care much about dolls. He saw just the box for these and was like, I want one. Like if you don't want to display one, I want to put one in my game room. And then he just saw them now when he came home, he was like, these are rad. <laughs> he used a little bit more explicit language, but he loves the design of these dolls. And so when you can appeal to someone who doesn't even give a shit about dolls, I think that says a lot. Like I feel like the designs for these, if you are going purely on aesthetics are genuinely incredible designs, but the quality just doesn't necessarily match up. So my best I guess, advice or endorsement or whatever you might want to call it is if you are a beginner, if you're considering buying your first set ever of BJDs, don't buy these um, because the chances of you having to switch out the hands like out of necessity are higher than I feel comfortable with. And so many of them require that if you want the choker on, you have to take the entire head off that I don't feel like it's good. If you are someone who has had BJDs before and has experience with these things, or even if you're just brave and bold and you don't really care if that's a risk, then I think they might be worth it on a sale. I will say with this listing specifically on Kika Goods, sometimes you can only get like the blind boxes and you can either buy one or you can buy a whole pack, but that's it. This one does have the option to buy individual characters, which I think is really, really cool. When I was like looking it up to film this video, a lot of them were sold out, but they could come back in stock. So if you can pick which character you want, I do think it's slightly more worth it because maybe you feel comfortable with the idea of changing hands out to get this sweater on and you really love this design. And I don't really have any quality control issues or not quality control, but like <laughs> quality issues period with this one. I mean, she did have two left or right hands, but as far as just in terms of like, she doesn't have a super papery skirt or like the decals aren't peeling or anything like that. Obviously everyone has a different experience, but I feel a little bit more comfortable saying that that's something that you could do because you have the option to buy a specific one. Or even if you just like the designs and you're willing to like accept the quality, I think if you get these while they are on a sale, like the one Kika Goods is having right now, I think that's more valid because they are 23 US dollars a piece. Um, I, I honestly don't know because I didn't think it was going to be 100% relevant, just to be forthright. I'm not sure if they're included in like the buy one, get one free or if it's like a buy one, get one half off situation. 
but I feel like that's a little bit more worth it because you could be getting two and you're getting for them for the price of one or the price of one and a half or whatever the case may be. So I feel like it's a little bit easier to say, okay, yeah, there is the potential for a quality control issue and some of the quality might be iffy, but that's a better price tag, right? So I do think that if they're on sale and you like a couple of them, or if there's something else on the website that you want to get, or if they have a sale in the future that doesn't require that you buy multiples, that is definitely more worth it to me. I do feel like I'm being, I don't know, maybe a tad bit harsh because while the clothing is not always up to par with what I personally would consider good quality, these dolls do have a lot more articulation than you're going to get from like a lot of dolls that are more common in America, like the Barbie or uh, like Rainbow High at this point. So there is some sort of trade off there. So maybe I'm being a bit harsh with that. Definitely the quality control can't be overlooked, but maybe like the papery skirt isn't as bad. You also do get the extra heads with all of them, the extra hands with all of them. So like Y'all have to decide for yourselves if I'm being extra mean. I am coming straight off of the frustration of assembling them, so maybe that's what's going on. But I guess if you want like the super, super short and sweet version is if you're a beginner, I would not buy these until you have some experience with other BJDs and until you feel more comfortable with like dealing with BJDs. And if you are not a beginner or you're just simply not worried about it, me personally, I would wait for a sale. But if you are fine with the price tag as is, you now have the information you need to go for. <laughs> so this was kind of a rough one, kind of a wild one, but I hope it was helpful for you guys. I hope it was informative for you guys. As I said at the beginning, Kika Goods has all of those different Halloween sales going on. And that is up through November 3rd. So if you want to take advantage of that to get these or a lot of the other stuff on the website is included in the sale, definitely feel free to do so. If you're seeing this after November 3rd, my code FAIRYTALE10 is always good for 10% off. So you can use that to kind of alleviate the price as well. But that is finally going to be it for me, guys. A nice long, complicated one. But as I said, I hope you could get something out of it. I hope maybe it was a little bit entertaining for y'all, but I'm going to go eat dinner now. <laughs> so uh, you guys have a lovely rest of your day or your night, whatever it might be. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys.